they should be live now here we go so um so yeah guys uh let's get into uh the market pulse and see what we kind of have going on there for the spy right now looking pretty strong and what we got coming up uh this week yeah, Ben. So um, Monday morning, obviously, we're still in the, the middle of earnings season for second quarter. When I got up this morning, SPY was flat. And I was like, eh, it's probably just going to be a sideways summer day. Um, but then I guess, it, I believe it was Lily that came out with some info on a phase three trial for a COVID vaccine, or um, I believe it's a plasma treatment. But e e either way, uh, after that, it's definitely caused the market to, to spike and start to rally. So, SPY's up uh, almost six tenths of a percent. Um, SPY's up almost six tenths of a percent. We've got a good amount of data coming in this week. We've got earnings, as I mentioned, for a number of big companies. Not quite like last week. Last week was nuts. This morning at 9.45, we've got uh, manufacturing PM, uh, PMI, and then at 10 a.m., we've got construction spinning and uh, uh, ISM manufacturing index. Also, it's the beginning of the month, so today and the next day or so, we'll start getting auto sales for July trickling in. Um, later in the week, we will have non-farm payrolls and uh, unemployment weight and all the employment data coming in for July. So people definitely be looking for that to see if and how we are rebounding, um, obviously from one of the biggest uh, job loss situations in history. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll definitely see how that plays out, guys. Uh, let's take a look at our gappers list this morning. We have quite a bit, obviously, in the green today, uh, given the fact that things are doing well. We have a few in the red, some uh, cruise lines on here, then some other ones, BLNK, Snap. Uh, are in here gapping down a bit today. So we'll take a look at what's going on uh, there this morning. But, all right, guys, let's dive in here. Let's take a look at our at our what's gapping down. Let's start there. So we're going to go over to CUK. We know it's a share class from CCL. So usually CCL is the one that trades a lot better. Um, so let's skip to that one at the moment. You can see here we do have a nice uh, gap down today. We're losing this area of great support. Now, again, this these stocks, the airlines and the cruise lines, have not done well over the last couple of days. I think they've been uh, pretty choppy to say the least as far as intraday trading you can see here the volume for the most part this is when we were having a lot of fun with this right even before then right here you can see how much volume we had uh, and it was very nice to trade even though the days were not uh, as wide right you did have some really good opportunities for day trades you can see the volume increasing nicely here if you look at the last uh, week or so you can see the volume uh, drastically decrease here and that has not created good opportunities for us right the, the intraday play has been a uh, pretty pretty crappy here look at how how bad this daily looks here look at the volume less than usual and we're not getting good play so today we do have a nice drop here leaving this area of support that could hopefully bring something on board we do have 520 uh, right now as far as volume so again worth putting on here just to see if there's anything that's going to be created there yeah. um we've got daily. a catalyst this morning oh too. we do okay so that's going to be even more interesting what do we have for so it so yeah ccl uh they uh if you remember i don't know if you do a while back a month or so they had a positive catalyst that one of their subsidiaries, I believe it's Ada Cruises or something something like that, uh, was going to start sailing, I think, in mm -hmm. August. Um, not, it was like oh, three, yeah, I three voyages. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've canceled those. They've canceled oh, those. So that's why okay. we're getting that drop now. Okay, so yeah, no, not a uh, good uh, situation for them here. Hopefully that could create some opportunities. Again, still a lot less volume than what we're used to seeing when this thing was just taking off all over the place or, or dropping all over the place, right? But we'll see if this creates something for us today. Let's head back up to BLNK this morning. Uh, not a great pre-market action, guys. Uh, most of the volume sitting on this one candle here, at least a, a little bit less than half, uh, about a third sitting on this uh, on this candle here, 36,000 shares traded. For the most part, this pre-market is not looking great. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, just look at a uh, nclh uh another one um, any catalyst on this one or it's just kind of a, a sympathy, sympathy play? move on this yes sympathy mm -hmm. move on ccl yeah so i'm gonna put this down guys as a possible uh again usually these two when they're active uh oops let's get the right ticker in here here we go um and clh let's put that one on there just as a possible see if today's going to be the day where these the, these ones are a little more active than usual uh clx uh not a great pre-market action guys pretty choppy right now uh it is down 2.8 the daily also seems very very choppy what kind of stock is this uh this is clorox sure. 
Oh, that's what it is. Okay, the clause is not trade yep. well at all. Um, look at the mo for the most part, the volume guys very light. Do we they have any type of news today, Norm yeah, or they, Catalyst? They had earnings. They had earnings this morning, and they beat their earnings uh, pretty substantially. But you know, I, I obviously uh, they're a beneficiary of the entire Corona issue uh, disease with everybody cleaning everything constantly. So yeah, I kind of expected. I think they've run up run up to this and it's just kind of like sell the news on the earnings deal okay gotcha um could be a possible earnings play again this one i'm not a whole uh, big fan of i think the volume is very light the intraday plays are not great um i'm gonna throw it on here as a possible but it might not stay there for long let's see what happens a uh, qlgn guys this one it is a horrible pre-market action let's skip on this uh nasty volume as well uh, for the most part on, on regular basis so let's go down over to snap uh snap as we know guys very choppy stock when even when it is in play could be very choppy uh at the moment this is not a great look for snap right now uh, the daily looks interesting, right? Possible situation here where we're losing an area of has been a, a good support. We lost uh, the previous day close line here. You can see that has been a good support for it as well. But down here, you also have some areas as well. So the daily looks interesting, but the pre-market, not at all. We need a lot more from Snap. If you know Snap trades heavily uh, on volume on a, on a regular basis, and this pre-market is not looking great. Um, I know there were, yeah, it, uh, it's there were a wild last week, right? Yeah, it's wild last week. It's, it's all this TikTok stuff that's coming out so um you know toward the end of last week well tiktok's been in the news about mm -hmm. you know potentially being banned in the u.s for a while and uh that kind of came to a uh peak last week and the president i think it was it friday it even came out that he might uh, by executive order ban TikTok in the U.S. And I guess over the weekend, Microsoft's having talks of acquiring their U.S. Part, the, the U.S. division, which would keep them open. That's hitting Snap and Facebook this morning. Got it. All right, we'll see what, what happens there, guys. Again, even Snap, even when it has news, it's just you got to be careful with how... Uh, how this one trades all right let's see what's gapping up we have a lot in here this morning guys just want to scroll you through it right now we have uh, some in the double digits there a couple of low flow stocks coming in uh and then we have all the way down here i see pins was very active last week very choppy difficult to trade sucked, oh my god in fact let's talk about pins because I, was... I made money on pins yeah. on friday but i felt like i was getting kicked in the face mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. entire time i was getting i was trading it i i felt like there was a little robot on my sucked. computer every time i went long they went short on me with a lot more heavy volume and it was just so choppy it was just insane after like the fifth trade i'm like you know enough is enough <laughs> so i called it but uh again yeah. it was pre-market amazing at the open just the choppiness on it was just unreal uh -huh. typical nicey stock uh stuff here and look at the volume compared to what it normally does guys it's very explosive so hopefully you can just feel it being manipulated by oh market but not God. manipulated yeah, yeah. i mean that that infers something they're doing is illegal but just the price movement on it being controlled by market makers. And that's a perfect example, guys, of when mm -hmm. we say nisey garbage or whatever, mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of why. Yep, yep. It, it was just unbelievable. I mean, look at the range this thing had and look at the volume. And, and just look how it, it ended up trading. It's just incredible. So um, let's go to the top here, guys. I, I am UX uh, this morning. They are up 39%. Some good, decent pop here. Horrible pre-market action. Even for a low flow stock, this is just not something you want to have on your list, at least not right now. Um, it is a 7.9 million shares flow. But look at this. Uh, uh, just pre-market is not looking great. So let's skip on to the next one. VAR uh, also looks like a buyout at the moment. Uh, but again, not a great pre-market market action whatever's going on with them now um so we'll skip on this one you also another stock that trades very light on volume under a million shares for the most part usually these type of stocks don't trade it very is, well it is a today. cash buyout by the way buyout okay yeah. uh let's head on over to CLDX this one was a uh, pretty active uh beginning of you know around May beginning of I think uh, April yeah April was very active uh again it is a uh, on the lower side of, of the flow is a 26 million but it seems like it does trade lower than that this morning there they got some pretty good volume up 15.6 197,000 shares traded right now uh again nice pop here but again and one you have to be very careful with i'm gonna put it here on the low flow pile because it is a stock that uh can give you some opportunities but you have to treat it like a low flow um let's head on over to mpc uh mpc they did is, they did get a yeah. fda fda approval on a rapid covid test um 
That's yeah. the news I'm seeing, which I thought they already had, so I'm a little surprised to see that news, but maybe it's a different test or a new test. Okay. I haven't really dug into it. Not my yeah. type of... Yeah, not really our, our type of stock to trade, but we've seen members that, that trade this type of style do well. You know, so again, it's about you know, having a strategy, having an edge that, that uh, can work consistently. So uh, let's head on over to plug. We're not going to spend too much time here because this stock to me is just trades horrible. It's not a clean mover at all. You do got some volume on it. pre market's not that exciting. If it was any other stock, this daily could look interesting. Had a big bounce, bounce back on Friday here. Could be a possible continuation breaking out of this area of consolidation. But man, this stock is just it's just doesn't, does not trade well so uh let's go on over down to nkla this one has been putting in a very nice daily guys over the last couple of days finding some good support here uh below this 20 uh, below this 30 uh 29 20 looks like um again let's see how it has been trading if you look at the intraday we have been getting some pretty pretty dis decent pops here again uh pretty aggressive so like this candle here it's very aggressive so you got to be careful with that one uh here this five minute but overall it does get some good volume it has been trading uh, we have had some good days on it uh might be a breakout day today so we'll see definitely going to put this on here nk uh, la another stock that you also want to be careful with the number of shares you take because this thing can really really move on you um Hang on down to SOHU. Nothing happening here, guys. Look at the pre market, horrible. And we'll do just two more and then we'll get over to uh, our chat, see what we got going on there. JMIA. Uh, this one has been ripping over the last couple of days. Now, I've been taking it off my list. Uh, let's see what it has been doing. So, this is Friday. Uh, Friday, not bad. Again, just looking at the range now, it looks like it came back, regained the VWAP here, broke out of the high of the day. It's got some good possible plays here without seeing how the action really developed uh, live. Uh, the day before that, Thursday also had a nice little uh, uh, breakout here after some choppiness in the morning. So again, not sure what the news is. This thing is getting pretty uh, pretty extended on the daily, breaking out of 11 here, hitting 17 this morning. Uh, no red day in the last couple of days. So again, just not sure what's, uh, what's driving this one. Um, we'll put it on here, guys. We'll see what uh, kind of pre-market action we're going to continue to get. Uh, out of this one this morning obviously volume is increasing here so more more eyes on this stock as it continues to rip higher and higher um last one we cannot not talk about uh ko K -O -D -K here so kodak guys this one uh let's see what we got going on 1.8 million shares traded right now look at the pre-market action at the moment guys just getting into this really choppy situation uh it has it had his run already uh, a couple of days ago here nice drop you know the day before that was also very choppy uh so again just be careful with this one guys it's gonna be it's gonna have a lot of volumes i think it's gonna be in our gappers list for some time here as it continues to pop up and down uh but again i, I think the, their good trading days are, are pretty much uh uh, done here but i said that before something popped up pretty good so <laughs> so uh, All right. let's see what happens norm what do you got this morning i'm gonna throw one out to you that should be on the scanners here in just a second that's chgg -G -G chegg running up into earnings they report tonight it's up 4.6 percent just under it's it like 600 more shares yeah. go and I, I was hoping you would stop talking about kodak so i could say it before it actually showed up on the scanners yeah so that'll yeah. hit any second 600 more shares and, and we'll be on the scanners and then ADT, ADT, uh, ADT, security company. Yeah, um, this thing's up 68% this morning. Wow. Nice. Uh, on 10 million shares traded. They have a deal. They announced a deal with Google. Um, Ooh, I have not nice. dug into that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Google's taking a, like a 6.5-ish percent stake in them. And uh, they're, I guess, in a joint venture to create some kind of home security product of which I don't know. Nice. Hopefully nice. it involves Excellent. sharks with lasers on their head. <laughs> uh, it's looking pretty good right now, guys. Again, tons of volume, guys. 10 million shares traded already up nicely here. Uh, definitely on our list. So here we go. People, are asking, people yeah. are asking why this is not... Uh, People are asking why this is not on our scanners, ADT. The ATR on ADT is 34 cents, so our scanner uh, mm -hmm. limits it to ATRs above 50 cents. Now, that's a good thing to have. It keeps out stuff that isn't going to move during the day, but on occasion, we used to go mm -hmm. through NASDAQ active and gainers all the time, which yes. would find something like this, except it's noisy. Um, but we, we haven't had to do that because we've had so many options the last few months. Uh, and usually maybe like once a week you find one stock on there that trades well, but that ATR on something like this really doesn't matter to them.
Yeah, yeah. Usually on something like this, you have to wait for a catalyst to break out. Um, so that 50 cents helps us out a lot because if not, guys, this list here will be so much longer and you're going to get a lot of stuff that's just, it's like Norm said, doesn't trade well. Um, all right, guys, let's take a look at what we have uh, in our chat room. What do you guys like this morning? Uh, Gem is giving us SPCE space. Let's see what's happening with space today. Uh, at the moment, they got some good volume, 343,000, uh, up 4.2. Very choppy pre-market action. They had a couple of days last week and the week before where you had some good action on it. Um, even with no volume in the pre-market here on Friday, the nice little drop here. It looks like it wasn't as clean looking at these candles. Uh, but there was a couple of days. Uh, here's one on Thursday as well. You had some pretty good action on it too. Nice open, got a little choppy after that, but then a beautiful continuation over uh, close to that noon, uh, 12 o'clock uh, time. Frame. So this could be a hit or miss. The pre-market doesn't really mean much on space. I'm starting to see that. Um, but the daily looks like a possible pop here, guys. So yeah, we can put this down as a possible for now uh, and check out how things uh, get a little bit later. Now let's head down here over to, who do we have? Uh, let's go down to Edwin is giving us Neo. All right, so we have Neo here this morning. Good volume, 3.3 as usual. This stock trades heavily. Uh, some pretty good pre-market action. Uh, the daily is just kind of winding up here, getting ready for either a break or a drop at the moment. Uh, could go either way here, guys. I do like the setup. But again, the last couple of days, we've just kind of been chopping around, right? Chopping around in this daily uh, area. So I'm not sure what to expect here, guys, on this one. Uh, I'm going to put it as a possible. Let's take a look at WKHS this morning. Another one that Edwin has given us here. Uh, what do we have at the moment? Again, daily also very choppy the last couple of uh, of weeks, really. Uh, but in this intraday choppiness, we have seen some pretty good days. I have to, I do have to say that. Right now, pre-market 460, not the best pre-market action. Um, so again, I'm on the fence on this one. Uh, it tends to, it, this tends to happen a lot with WKHS, right? You have a bad pre-market and you have a, a nice drop. The, like the first 30 minutes are great on it, up or down, and then you get into this chop. That ha if you look at WKHS, that happens quite a bit, guys. Look at it again here on Thursday. Same thing, nice up pop here. And then the volume dies down and it goes into this chop. So be aware that, that this stock does that. So if you find yourself trading it after the, like, the first 35 minutes, 40 minutes, and you find yourself getting chopped up, that's what's happening. Same thing here the next, the previous day after that. So um, again, not sure what to think about this one, guys. I'm going to pass will be on, on my it. List. Oh, it will be? What do you have on it? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I like the consolidation it's in. Mm -hmm. You can see it came and hit that 1650. I believe it's high of the morning. Oh, I switched over to another one. It's high yeah. of the morning is 1760. It mm -hmm. topped out two days ago at 1750. So it just broke that and then rejected. I think it's in a consolidation range here. It is, it is, uh, it's held in here nicely. The other thing mm -hmm. I like, and for whatever reason, uh, trade idea, you know, they get different data streams from, from different um, sources. The, yeah. the short float on this is 33%. For some reason, trade ideas has it at 25-ish, I believe. Let me see yeah, here, 24.5. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, I, but every other source I see has a short float of 33-ish percent. So it'll be interesting if it can start to break out from that range, if there, if there could be a potential squeeze. But like mm -hmm. I've said in the past, don't do something prior to the squeeze. It, it, that, that's, I've, I've done that and it's a bad idea. Um, yeah, but if it yeah. does start to squeeze, it could be interesting. I agree. You, you, ha you have to wait for the setup, guys. Don't uh, don't jump in way too early on that. So, yeah, you know what? I do like the daily on this. Uh, Norm, I agree with you. I'll put it here as a possible as well. Uh, we'll see what we can get out of it. Uh, ben is giving us Microsoft. Uh, let's take a look here. Microsoft, very nice this morning. Up 3.3, 1.7 million shares traded right now. So I do love the daily on it uh, at the moment here. And the pre-market is very active. So definitely worth taking a look at Microsoft today. Um, the last couple of days, we had some pretty good days on Microsoft. Microsoft has been pretty active, which is nice. Uh, heading down here, we they've just got that. They've mm -hmm. got that TikTok news. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Justin Neal, we do have. Uh, Jesse Neal's breaking out. Yep, we have Neal is, uh, is on here, right? We do have that one. 
yeah, we do have Neo on here. I'm just concerned that Neo tends to do this, you know, a lot of volume. So I have it as a possible. We might move it up. Let, let's let's see what happens. Uh, Rom30, he's giving us Apple. Uh, let's take a look there. What's going on? Too many A's. Oh, there it is. Uh, wow, great pre-market actually on Apple. A great day on Friday. Obviously, we're, we were watching that closely. Uh, but look at the pre-market action now, guys. Definitely looks pretty good. I think Apple is great. Now, we know Apple is going into a uh, secondary, right, I believe? Uh, when, no, is that the end of the no, month? They've got a, they've got a, no, they've got a stock split. Stock um, split, yes, which me, this, yeah. mm -hmm. People are anticipating this running up into, a, into the split date. Yeah. Um, I mean, a stock split means nothing really in, in reality. Mm -hmm. It, let's say it's 400 bucks. It's a four for one split. It's what they're doing. So you're going to, if you have one share of Apple, the next at $400, the next morning, you're going to have four shares of Apple at a hundred bucks. It does nothing except it gives access potentially to retail investors that don't, right. that, that want to buy in, you know, uh, full lots or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's August 23rd or 4th. Yeah. So, so again, we'll we gotta, see. We got a nice little pre-market action for them this morning. I think it's worth putting on here. Again, the market is up too very nice. You know, Apple is a you know it's a big chunk of that, right? So if market is doing so well, this is going to do well also. And we're seeing that today uh, uh, in the pre-market. Uh, let's take a look at um, uh, Microsoft. We looked at Neo is good. Roku Zen is giving us Roku here again. We're we're keeping a oh Roku looks very interesting today, Norm. I know we've been keeping a very close eye on this one. We're sitting at the uh, against this level of resistance that we have tested over and over. Again again here here uh on friday again and now we're kind of you know we're sitting at a very tight range towards the, the uh, against the top of this one uh, 158.25 so uh, i like what i'm seeing here on roku again volume is not great only 50k but that's going to be my top possible this morning um, that's pretty heavy for roku frankly in the pre-market the 50k right <laughs> yeah 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 they, they don't do much pre-market it's just no, it's crazy it's not the pre-market uh CLDX uh we looked at yes CLDX does have a good pre-market action guys again very active this morning nice daily too as well just be careful with this one treat it like a low flow it's only 26 million uh, shares flow but it, you know it moves like it is lower than that sometimes uh QCOM we'll do a few more and then we'll go over to our YouTube chat see what we have there so QCOM at the moment my issue with QCOM it could be a very choppy stock to trade we had a big day on a, uh this was what uh Thursday Right, had a nice day Thursday. It really held uh, this move here. Uh, look at the rip on Thursday. Let's go back uh, again. This is when they had the gap up and they held it, right? They held it nicely. Uh, but look at the day after. I just want to show you uh, how the choppiness starts to kick in here. Uh, and then in QCOM, you know, it might be like that in the next couple of days. So look how choppy this is, guys. All right, so again, you do have a, if you, if you time it, you do have a nice run here. But overall, this is a very choppy situation for QCOM. So, um, at the moment, guys, not a whole lot of volume, very, very light pre-market action. I'm not saying that you cannot not have a great day here. Positive continuation as we're hitting up against that 108. Looks like high, uh, higher higher lows the last couple of days. So that's always a good sign of getting that buy pressure up against that number. But again, just not sure how clean it's going to be with this type of pre-market action right now and the volume kind of uh, dying down. It doesn't trade a lot, right? This day has a whole lot of volume here, obviously, because of the gap up. But for the most part, it doesn't trade a whole lot of volume. And I'm concerned with the less volume, it's going to be even more choppy uh all right do one more amd amd has been just incredible uh, uh, for a very long time now pre-market actually lighter than usual only 242 uh so again not seeing anything all that great on amd but again Take a look on the, at the SPY, whatever the SPY is doing. If you see a good move one way or the other, AMD tends to follow that. Uh, so again, the SPY is up today. AMD is up almost 1%. Uh, this could be the sleeper for today. Maybe keep an eye on the scan or see if this thing starts popping up there. Uh, all right, let's take a few from um, YouTube here. Apple, we do have Jay. That's good. Uh, Ron is giving us DTSS. DTSS. See what we have here uh, on this one. DTSS uh this is ripping up right now again more of a penny stock guys low flow i'm assuming sitting at here at a, a under a dollar for the most part breaking out now with some good volume 3.7 uh so dtss 5.5 uh, 5, uh 5.9 million shares flow so we can put it on here definitely active could be a low flow of the day today uh, alongside CODX but again just as usual guys be careful we got i got a nice rip going on this morning right now uh paypal let's take a look 
PayPal today. Nice daily on PayPal. Beautiful breakouts here. Again, had a, a big uh, big week last week. Uh, breaking out here out of 178. Gapping up. Keeping that gap and continuing to rip up higher here. Hitting the, the high of this gap up uh, uh, at the moment. Pre-market, guys, very, very light right now. I'm not seeing anything great. Um, again, we'll have to see if it, we get more volume out of this one. If it hits our scanners. But right now, the volume is just too light to keep on our main list. Um, Let's do one more CODX we do have, uh, PayPal we do have. All right, good, we're good over there. Oh, here it is, one more. Let's take a look at Long Shot. He's giving us H-I-H-O. And uh, at the moment, uh -oh. uh, pre-market, yeah, right, <laughs> pre-market right now. Uh, pretty uh, pretty choppy, guys, the pre-market. You can see this on here. We do have some amazing volume, 4 million shares traded on this one so far. But again, these stocks are trading under $2, $3, and they're now gapping up usually do not trade her that well you have one or two that really break out and are amazing to trade but again it's, it's all really 2.9 2.9 2 million share float i mean yeah, yeah exactly exactly we could so. get all our buying power and buy the company yeah like just the people that are here before <laughs> 7 30 in the morning that's right that's right so uh so we'll, we'll Dangerous. Skip, skip on this one guys let's go over to our community announcements and we will come back uh and fine tune this even a little bit further so all right, guys, it's Monday, so quick weekly rundown. This is the general schedule of how we usually run the room. It was a little bit different during COVID times uh, with people being home. They're on the mic more, but uh, usually, Brian, 2.30 p.m. in the swing trade discussion. He has been blessing us with his presence each and every afternoon, really, uh, pretty much with Brian and, uh, excuse me, with Peter and Mike. I don't, Brian, Peter, and Mike, uh, which we'll talk about again in a second. Then Carlos has got his famous live onboarding class each and every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, that is in the classroom. Then Tuesdays and Thursdays is the trade review at noon in the classroom with Eamon. And success webinars are generally Wednesday at 8 p.m. for lifetime members in the webinar room. Uh, I don't know how I missed that. I apologize. I guess I, I missed putting this in here. Uh, this week, we've got John Hills talking about trading single strategy. Most of the people in the room know that he's been trading his break of high of day pattern. Uh, just, I think, only that for about the last month. So he'll discuss that. Um, and, you know, we get a lot of questions from new traders on having to trade a, you know, how many strategies do you need? Just one if it's successful. So he'll be talking about that. It's best really to focus on one strategy and kind of go, it's not on here for whatever reason, but we've got uh, Robert Green from Green Trader Tax. He's going to be talking about uh, taxes and trader tax status for U.S.-based traders. That'll be next Wednesday, the 12th at 8 p.m. I apologize. I will get that fixed for tomorrow. Uh, this week, we've got Dr. Katz talking about improving discipline. Um, that is tomorrow night, 8 p.m. in the webinar room. Number one most important thing in trading is discipline. Uh, tr member trade of the day. It's a new week. We had a winner last Friday. They will get their $100 Amazon gift card soon if it's not already in the mail or email or the like, uh, but we start fresh with a new competition this week. Monday through Thursday, mark up and post your trade on Twitter by 1.30 p.m. Tag at Bearable Traders, at Mike B underscore BBT, and myself at Norm BBT. Use hashtag BBT family. If, unless you do that uh, and, and do it as we mentioned there, we don't know if you're trying to enter the competition or just share a trade, so make sure you tag all three of us and use that hashtag. Um, we'll select the winner. Mike will announce that in the closing bell show each day. Uh, that is Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, we take the, the four winners from Monday through f Thursday of the week and announce member trade of the week. And that will be the person that wins the $100 gift card this week. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube and haven't been in the chat, you can do so at a discount. It's a one-week trial. It's seven days. Doesn't auto-renew or turn into any other kind of membership. Use the promo code PREMARKET24. That'll reduce the rate from $39 for two weeks to $24 for two weeks. Like I said, seven days in the chat, five trading days unless there's a holiday. Also gives you class to that uh, access to Carlos's Monday night onboarding class. Catch the uh, markets close on Wall Street, simulcast on YouTube. That's Mike, Peter, and Brian from 3.30 to 4.15 p.m. Eastern talking about trade reviews, market analysis, swing trading, and earnings trade since we're right in the heart of uh, earnings season for second quarter. Good morning, Dr. Katz. 
Good morning, guys. Uh, how are you today? Great. How are you? Good. So I know you uh, previewed my webinar tomorrow with uh, Mike B uh, on trading discipline. So uh, given that, I thought I would give everybody a little sneak preview on uh, uh, trading and discipline. Um, as, as Norm said, it's one of the key factors in, in becoming a profitable trader. So I just thought I would kind of uh, mention a few things for Mindfulness Monday about uh, discipline, what it is, maybe a, how to achieve it, and a few of the golden rules in preparation for a little more in-depth discussion tomorrow night if you'd like to join me and Mike B at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So first, let's talk about just what discipline is. Really, discipline, uh, as most of us know, is really the ability to control yourself and to make yourself work hard and behave in a particular way uh, without needing anyone uh, else to tell you kind of what to do. Um, discipline is really about self-control and self-regulation. Now, it's important to know that discipline it is not a talent that is exclusive to an elite few. This is really important to know. Anyone can achieve self-discipline, um, but it is always difficult, especially in the beginning. So being prepared whenever you're trying to become more disciplined in a particular area, that it is not something that normally becomes is easy. Uh, and so you got to be ready for a few challenges, setbacks, and obstacles. So, but developing discipline is really a necessary and important trait for any trader whose goal it is to become profitable, consistently profitable over time. So then the question becomes, well, how do I, how do I achieve this? Um, so for trading, a couple of the basic premises is that you really need to be motivated. It's hard to be disciplined about something if you're not motivated. Um, one of the helpful things is in the process of trying to be disciplined about particular things is to remove some of the temptations or distractions uh, that can keep you from uh, being disciplined about a particular area. So you want to kind of get some of those distractions to a minimum. And then the key thing is to create goals, challenges, and deadlines as a, as a helpful aspect of, uh, of, of kind of working on your discipline. A key factor here is that when you're trying to be more disciplined is you really need to start small with your goals and your expectations and have reasonable and achievable goals and expectations with, with discipline. People who become a little too perfectionistic or um, it's like the person who says, I only want to get 98 to 100 on my math test. And then they're constantly feeling disappointed when they're only getting 92. The key in discipline in the early part is to set small, achievable, and reasonable goals so that you could start feeling good that you are making positive steps. But you also need to forgive yourself and be nice to yourself when there's momentary periods of setback or minor kind of failures. So that is really key. You've got to let go of that, see what you did improperly, and move forward. Um, you know, the key, one of the golden rules for trading is really, of course, for discipline is to have a trading routine, a trading plan, strategy, target, stop losses. These are some of the basic disciplined aspects that any successful, long-term, profitable trader kind of follows through in a very consistent, disciplined way. But let me mention one thing that often is not mentioned in books about trading discipline or when discipline is talked about in general. One of the reasons that I really stress starting with small achievable goals and being able to feel like you're making progress is because one of the insidious and unsettling things that happen when we all try to be disciplined about aspects of our lives, trading or not, and we don't achieve it, it really kind of makes us feel less worthy. We feel less good about ourselves. And so people who set too high expectations and then constantly feel like they're not disciplined or they're failing, it erodes our senses of self and it really makes us feel badly about ourselves. And this can permeate our lives beyond trading. So very often that's not talked about. It's not just like I screwed up there, or I screwed up there, is that it, it it kind of eats away at how we feel about ourselves. And you want to build a good, strong foundation where you can feel that you're taking positive and gradual and incremental steps to becoming more disciplined. 
Don't worry about going 60 miles an hour. It's more important that you go 15 or 20 one step at a time. We always want to achieve goals faster than we often get them, but there's no fast forwarding this process. There's no, you need the reps, you need the experience. Norm and Carlos will tell you that. Setbacks look, are part of the game. You need to look at it and move forward. So again, take care of yourself in this process. Try to develop discipline. It is one of the things that really builds a good sense of self and is enormously important in overall trader confidence, trader happiness, and trader success. That's what I got, couldn't guys. Agree, couldn't, couldn't agree more. I've got a couple of questions for you coming up in just a second, but I wanted to say, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to be a trader as it is. It, it's, uh, it's impossible without the discipline. Like you, you cannot separate those things, I think. So, so very wise words from you this morning. Much appreciated. Got a couple of questions. I'm going to take uh, the first one that came in from the room and then the uh, first one that came in on YouTube. So um, Mick's asking, he's making the same mistake, I guess, repeatedly and know what it is, but he's having a hard time fixing it. Um, and that essentially is uh, kind of FOMO, chasing stocks, entering a trade without a plan for it, which any any exercises or thoughts you can uh, to to help with something like that when you you know the mistake that you're making and you're having a hard time fixing it or changing your your you know your actions away from doing that thing you know that's not good okay the first thing that comes to mind for me as a psychologist is the word commitment uh people can know what the mistakes are uh and haven't really made a firm commitment to changing it. We want it to be different. We'd like it to be different, but we haven't taken the steps you know, off the trading day to look what those errors are, map out a plan to kind of take a different road. We, you have to really be committed to making a change. That's a very personal individual decision. We can't just explain changes to just happen kind of by themselves or magically. So I think you really have to outline a specific plan. What specific steps are you going to take? Again, this should be done after the trading day. This should be reviewed in your pre-trading day routine and reminders. Maybe again, even have a posted listed of those, of those aspects. And here's the key thing. If you sense this is a warning sign and just get up and remove yourself from the, uh, from the desk so that you don't play out that same pattern again. So the absence of the negative is huge. Sometimes the first step of not doing something, a problem again, is not just to solve it, but is to not do it again. So I would take those as your first steps. Yeah, it's a lot like anything really that takes discipline, whether it's losing weight or being a better spouse or anything like that. You've identified the problem and then step away from it and don't do it while you're actually trading, but you know, take a sheet of paper and write down the steps you need to, you need to do. It makes a lot of sense and, and kind of get that in your head and review it each morning before you trade. Um, one other quick question here. So a common trader issue is having a good day. Uh, it's happened to all of us. Have a good day, make a few hundred bucks, let's say, and, and it, you know, you've, you've traded and, and everything's gone well. And then you think, okay, I'm going to take another trade and it, then you go through a series of trades and you get back all your profits and sometimes go in a loss category for the day. How does one, what, what are some thoughts on how to keep from doing that? And it really goes back to greed more than anything else. So, so how do you, how, how would one mentally uh, try to get away from being greedy, I guess? Well, I think about it as getting back to the thing we've talked about before is process versus outcome. Uh, People, traders are successful when they follow a disciplined process. Um, but there's a natural tendency when things go well, it's a human tendency to kind of loosen up your, your process. Sometimes it's unconscious. Think about sports all the time. A basketball team gets a 17 point lead, is coasting, and all of a sudden they start feeling themselves a little more. And before you know it, they let up just slightly and the lead's now seven. It wasn't like they were consciously deciding to give up the big lead. It's just that they loosened up often on their intensity, their focus, their concentration, and their process. So if you find yourself doing that very often, kind of being disciplined, focused, con you know, concentrating well, and then something shifts when you start having a good day, then the key is that again, and sometimes you need a visual reminder just with some of those cue words, focus or concentrate. 
but the little warning light in your brain should go off that here is the time to increase the intensity of your focus and concentration. And so I often talk about mental endurance being the ability to sustain a high level of focus and concentration over an extended period of time. That's what trading takes during the day. Because a lot of people can talk about, oh man, the first four hours of the trading day were great. And then I kind of got a little full of myself, a little complacent. Not that I thought that any trade I threw against the wall was going to stick. But you realize when you review it, you weren't as mindful and disciplined about your strategy and process. So that to me is the first, become aware that as the day goes well, instead of lessen, loosening up, you tighten your process because that's when you're most susceptible to kind of being less disciplined. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. Katz. I uh, hope you have a great week and uh, you okay. have a lot of great feedback in the room. So all the traders, I know you, you're on a different program and not watching their comments, but many people saying thank you and excellent talk. So, Well, I appreciate that. It always makes me feel good and stick with it and have a good trading week, everybody. You got it. Take care, Doc. All right. Thank you, Dr. Katz. Always, uh, always great to have him on and hear that great information. So I love the advice. Um, so guys, make sure we give uh, Dr. Katz a thumbs up there on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, guys, let's get to our watch list this morning. Uh, we have a bit on here. Let's start with CCL. I like CCL right now with what's happening. The nice gap down here. Uh, we do have more volume than we've seen it in the last couple of days there. So uh, again, just uh, definitely want to keep this on there. Um, let me see here. NKLA is uh, good as well. Good pre-market action. I do like the daily also. We're getting a bit of a bounce here. Uh, uh, kind of an indecision day on uh, on Friday. And now we're on top of this consolidation range. So I like what I'm seeing there. Volume is great. So I want to keep this one on there. JMIA, this one, again, it's a little bit extended on the daily. Uh, so that could create some opportunities. It could be interesting. I'm not sure if it's going to be strong enough to continue to uh, get another green day in here. It might be. Uh, but I'm on the fence on it. We'll do some levels for it and we'll decide whether we want to place this one on our main watch list or over here as a possible. Uh, CHGG, again, a good, good breakout here. We do have a catalyst behind this one, uh, getting some good volume now here of five, almost 4.8 uh, uh, up this morning. ADT is wild. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that, see if it's going to trade well this morning. Again, they got 12 million shares traded. Uh, Microsoft is good. Apple is also good. Yeah, I think all these on here are pretty good. And just to kind of recap on our, on our possibles, we we have Roku for a possible breakout here on the daily. Uh, NCLH also getting a good movement here. Again, more of a th sympathy play uh, from C uh, CCL uh, at the moment. Looks like it's trying to go green for the most part. Uh, CLX, I'm going to remove, guys. The pre-market is still not looking great. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this one for right now. Space at the moment, we got some volume here. Uh, daily looks okay. So, so Neo is good. And we also have WKHS uh, for a possible uh, uh, breakout here. If we can get a nice squeeze going, that's normal. It's breaking down. Uh, break Breaking down uh, early, early this morning. So, all right, let's start with CCL towards the top, guys. We've been consolidating between this 1460 and this 1380. So you have your highs and lows in here. Your previous day close got you covered. Um, again, losing this great area of support this morning. Low of the pre-market sitting at 1310. Uh, and our high of our pre-market right up here around 1350. Uh, so we will mark those levels on there. Uh, I want to go over to the left here in case we decide to come back down and uh, and flirt with this 1310 again, the low of the pre-market. Let's see what we have as far as levels. So nice, nice, very clean level right on here, guys. Uh, this would be 1103. And then above that, we have another gray area as well over at around uh, 12 bucks. You can see 12 bucks. We had a couple of days consolidating there and also some great support happening there. So. Uh, pretty good levels towards the bottom very uh pretty much covered towards the top as well on ccl and again the pre-market now is starting to look even better you can see the beautiful range we're getting here 654 uh, and climbing on the on the volume uh, nkla i like the fact that we're kind of bouncing of this area we tested twice we tested it back on the 24th um, again uh, three days ago here 29 uh, on the dot uh, and we're kind of bouncing getting up above this area uh, of support here so 32.25 is the high of the pre-market uh, above this we do have 34.15 uh, as a possible area of resistance that was prior resistance when we had this initial bounce uh, from 29 there so uh, let's go over to the left just want to mark down one level below the uh, the uh, the market uh, the, the support level here 29 just in case 
uh, we decide to head back down here. But I don't think that's the way we're looking this morning. Uh, if we look over here, 27, guys, great area of support, prior resistance. Uh, whoops, I lost it. There it is. Yeah, prior resistance right on here. Good support now. Uh, but again, it looks like this thing wants to head north here. Uh, that's the way it looks at right now. So we'll see how that plays out. JMIA, again, I'm on the fence on this one, guys. We, do, we had a couple of days here have been pretty good. High of the pre-market at 17, the low uh, below the previous day close over at 14 uh 98 15 on the dot to be exact uh below that guys highs and lows from the last two trading days got you covered down here above 17 have we been up here not in the most recent time we have to go back to august uh right about a year ago uh, you can see we were above this area of 17. We do have a level right on here at a nine, around 19 or so. Uh, so we can just get one level above that just in case uh, we're going to move uh, in that direction. Here we go. 19. Yep. Perfect. Right there. Um, all right. So again, right now, I'm on the fence on it. it has a great run over the last couple of days. I think it's getting a little bit extended. Pre-market is not looking so well. I think this is going to be a great possible. So I'm going to move it down here. Uh, I want to keep it close. I am Roku and NCLH as my top possibles, but I will keep an eye on JM IA uh, as well. I'm going to remove it from my main list this morning. Uh, C uh, H G G again, we got a nice big pop here. I love the daily on it. Do we have the strength to keep going? Do we have the juice here to continue on this little run? Uh, we had uh, the last couple of two days so 85 95 uh, high of the pre-market low of the pre-market sitting around 82 10 so we'll mark that down and then below that guys highs and lows from the last two trading days uh, got you covered there so again uh, we got a catalyst behind this one worth watching this morning let's see if the pre-market can get a little bit better now keep in mind this is a nice stock so uh, for the most part you're not going to get a great volume at the at the pre-market that might change at the open so be mindful of that uh, here's ADT. Obviously, they have some big news uh, here with uh, possibly making a deal with Google. Uh, they are up nicely, 61%, 12 million, uh, almost 13 million shares traded right now. Uh, as far as levels, I have 2005 high of the pre-market. Look at the range on this thing, guys. High of the pre-market, 2005. Uh, right now, price is sitting at 13. So again, although the the ATR on this stock, and we were talking about earlier, this is the reason why it's not coming up on our scanner. The ATR on this is 34 cents. Uh, but again, today, that's not the case. This thing is moving uh, quite a bit this morning, uh, has seen some, uh, if you look at the volume, this volume is usually what it trades in, in, a, in two months. Is trading that type of volume today so just be mindful of that uh, this is going to be a wild one this morning you do have some pre-market action in here uh, 1685 right on there 80, 81 is a good one as well uh, and then towards the bottom you really have just this one here maybe 1250 so uh, let's see how this plays out I think it's gonna be a good one today to watch and keep an eye on here's Microsoft Microsoft putting in a good pre-market actions got some good volume 2.3 and usually that type of volume is great for Microsoft they usually don't trade all that heavy pre-market action uh, uh, so 211.75 higher the pre-market above that we do have 213.98 and then above that we have 216 so again uh pretty strong right now pre-market looking really good for this one uh towards the bottom the low of the pre-market sitting at 205 so it's all the way down here by the previous day close again we'll mark it down but the previous day close is the one that really is your major area of uh a possible support that was resistance over the last couple of seven days the last seven days we've been just kind of uh, banging our heads against that there so uh above this guys we do have a level right in here 208 it's a great one i'll show you why look at the support and resistance right we broke out of this uh, level of prior resistance which now uh, can be support we broke out of that tested at 208 and then it became great support uh, after after we broke out to 216 came back down again testing that 208 one more time again here so uh, that could be an area of uh, of interest there on our 20814 on microsoft also pre-market you can see pre-market as well testing that area around 208 uh, so i really like the way microsoft looks this morning i love the way apple looks as well the market is strong apple is strong right now i uh, had a big day on friday uh, uh, as well nice gap up and continuation there with earnings and everything else playing out um, so let's see what it does today high of the pre-market sitting at uh, 433.60. Uh, the low of the pre-market very close to the uh, the, low, the high of uh, Friday's trading. Uh, bull market here 226.97 and that's really all you have. To, I believe we're at all-time high here with Apple. Uh, that's all the levels you have. Towards the bottom you got the highs and lows from the last trading day really. Um, so we'll see man. Apple's amazing right now. Good volume, good pre-market action. Looking forward to see what kind of open we're going to get there. Um, and then just kind of go over our possibles. Roku, I'm not going to mark levels. Uh, maybe I'll mark this one here uh, for Roku. Uh, so we marked a 166.36. But 
again, we have this 158 that we're looking closely at, uh, and I'm going to be paying a close eye on this one because we're getting to the point where we might have a beautiful breakout here on Roku. Uh, NCLH, possible play here, sympathy play. Or we, we'll be looking out for this one also. Uh, JMIA, we move down. Again, beautiful daily. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Space is good as well. A possible breakout here, guys. Let's get some levels for space. I think this one could be uh, interesting. High of the pre-market, 23.97. Above that, we do have this uh, level here at 24.88, and then all the way up here at 25. So again, some pretty good levels towards the top there. Uh, plenty of levels towards the bottom, highs and lows from the last two trading days. Uh, the previous day close also creating a great area of support for space here. Uh, Neo is good also consolidating here guys uh, great volume at the moment uh, I'll be looking for this to break out one way or the other could create some good opportunities uh, WKHS also a good one we got plenty of levels we're stuck between the highs and lows of the last two trading days so we'll see which way this thing wants to break out here remember this stock the first 35 minutes you get some really good plays uh, into that first 40 minutes it starts you start losing the volume it starts getting very choppy if you start to recognize that do not get in a trade because it would just be painful to see Sit there uh, waiting for uh, a move uh, all right guys that is what we have let's take a look at what our moderators have this morning uh, let's head on over here to our list so Andrew will be away today so he'll uh, he will not be trading we have Peter he has Apple Microsoft ADT uh, AMD pins uh, Facebook and snap uh, then we have Thor with Apple Microsoft and ADT uh, Mike has Apple Microsoft uh, Amen has Neo, Microsoft, and ADT as well. I think we all have AD ADT today. Jerry has UNG, ADT also. John, Apple, and Microsoft, two really good stocks today. Uh, and Tiffany has Microsoft and ADT. So a uh, pretty, uh, I think we all have Microsoft, we all have ADT. Uh, those are two ones that you definitely want to have on your list as well as uh, Apple. I think Apple's a good one. So pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tight list right now on uh, from the moderator team there. Um, all right, guys, that is what we have. Norm, anything else before we uh, uh, shut it down here? No, I was just going to say I, I have those, but I also, uh, I've got Shag, CHGG, and Roku as well. Roku, in case it starts to break out, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, my list looking a little more similar to yours here. Uh, and I know you have a, a lot today on there, but again, I, I like a lot of these possibles this morning. Uh, Roku uh, is, uh, you know, is one that could be very active, especially when the market doing well today, guys, right? The market is, is ripping here. So uh, if, if it goes a nice little run here towards that 330, what levels do we have here, by the way? Let's go around the spy real quick. Do we have time? Yeah, we have a couple of minutes here. Uh, so we have some levels here around 333. All-time high sitting, not the exact number, but around 340 or so. So I'm going to have that on there as well. Uh, let's see, guys. It's going to be very interesting to see how the spy is going to end today uh, and this week. So take care, guys. Stay safe. Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, and we will see you guys uh, tomorrow, 30 Eastern time take care take, take care guys trade safe oh one more thing i forgot i forgot the trade of the week guys oh, sorry yeah. about that yeah forgot about that it goes to mike he had an amazing trade we spoke about it last week in the breakdown here it's just a beautiful trade so don't forget guys to submit your trades every day uh mike will be uh picking one out he'll be sending it over to everyone as the votes come in and then at the end of the week he'll pick the trade of the week so again congratulations great trade guys Take care now for sure, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.